You're listening to Amazing Radio. This is Amazing Afternoons. I'm delighted to say that I'm joined by Ryan from Bedroom. How are you doing, Ryan? Hello. I'm not bad, mate. How are you? Very well, thanks. It's nice to finally speak to you, as I've just said, uh, off air, because I feel like I've been playing Bedroom. We've played sessions from you and, you know, we've been playing all the singles from the first record. And of course, then the first record was such a success. Uh, but now we've got a new record, a new single, uh, Port, as well. Um, it's nice to... To, to speak to you, Ryan, I just wanted to, first of all, congratulate you on the success of the first record. I bet you, you didn't expect it to go that well, did you? Honestly, not at all. I'm still overwhelmed by the idea that it happened anyway. Like, to, to this day, still hearing and seeing, like, people respond to it as, as much as they did. It's overwhelming because coming from somewhere like Hull, you don't really expect records to do well, let alone anywhere in the world. So, no, it was really nice to see that happen and I don't know it gave us a real boost that we I could actually maybe do this <laughs> going back to the infancy of of the band we had a few singles obviously before we had the the, the record but was the plan always to do a, a full-length record of the you know the, the shoegazy style of which you're synonymous with now um yeah I think so well like when I was recording the demos like because it, it was over like years and years that the demos kind of got put together to create the record. And I think we all felt going into create that uh, we wanted to make a shoegaze record because it was what was um, maybe bringing out so much emotion with us and which the records that we kind of related to the most at the time. So when we went to the studio, we all had the idea that like we'd love to make a record like that. And I feel like to begin with, there was a bit of a uh, misunderstanding, not misunderstanding, but didn't really know what was happening because we'd never created a record before. And then it was halfway through, I think Alex, the producer, was just like, all oh, right, we're making the Shoegaze record then. And it was like, yeah. <laughs> and then uh, we did and it just, yeah, we, we were just really proud of it. Yeah, you, sh you should be. It's really, really great. And you found a good home in Sonic Cathedral as well, someone who knows a bit about Shoegaze, to say the least. And it, it's been a perfect matchup. And But organic at the same time, like you say, you just ended up making this this great record but you were playing a few shows as well at the time before you you know putting the record out did did that shape the the record as well you know road testing things but with the genre you you fell in as is there a kind of you know do you find yourself in the studio having to limit yourself you know because you can just go off in a riff for for so long if you like well yeah we definitely had to uh, rein it back in the studio because we could have like the album could have been double its length because when we're when you're playing that kind of music, you can just get completely lost in it. So um, we, working with Alex, he definitely um, made like an instrumental into a single, and so which was a really nice way to work because um, I think it definitely helped us learn a lot about going into create a record that I think you don't really think about being as not as hard work, but as different as when you maybe thinking oh we're gonna work out an album is gonna be that process it's not as cut and dry but no it was it was a great experience and um yeah we played a lot of stuff on the road yeah before we took it to the studio and um no yeah it's just it all worked really kind of organically and are you a kind of band to find yourselves in the studio throw the kitchen sink at it or do you you know, just stick to your pedal boards, if you like. Um, well, with the first record, I feel like it was very, um, we used a lot of just what we had, um, our pedals and stuff. But um, going to with Port, that was a lot more synth oriented, a lot more industrial kind of sounds with our influences and kind of delved deeper into the furthest places of our genres rather than um, what we um had been on the first record like there was a lot of nine inch nails and stuff like that so using kind of um i can't remember the word, the word for it just like we, we yeah it's been a, a very different experience now yeah um let, let's talk about that the experience and because you know we've had the the remixes of certain tracks over over time as well but port is the first like proper a uh, bit of new material. What? So you you're saying there was a different in approach in terms of what you guys were listening to in terms of influence, but any difference of approach or kind of, or was it just the same same lads back in the same practice room going back, you know, just trying to create some more music then? Yeah, well, um, the demo was created um, 
during lockdown, I'm trying so hard not to use the L word when we're going down this uh, uh, path. But um, yeah, so I was creating it then. So I feel like the creation process of it was very different because there was only one way you could write. Um, and I think that definitely shapes what the track is now, especially like how, I wouldn't say different, but like a bit deeper and a lot more emotive in a different sense. Um, but yeah, so when we went, we took that demo and went into the studio as we would with the other album. Um, but we kind of worked completely different. Like we started with, from the synth, we built all the noise first and then gradually added, like kind of worked backwards. Mm -hmm. um, and it was a really, it was an, a strange experience cause, like, cause I, I kind of took a bit of a, more of a backseat in the creation of it, it was more Jordan and Alex who just absolutely threw every piece of knowledge that they knew at it. Um, so yeah, like so much analog synth and just just noise, and it was it was a really it was a strange thing to be working on, but it was it was a really good experience. I can't wait to get back and do it more. Yeah. So tell me then plans then going forward. You got a few dates in the diary, but obviously more new music on the way as well then. Uh, yeah. Um we well with um the with Port, we've got a few um remixes coming out of that. I can't really say much about it, but there's a couple on there that are like kind of dream come true. People really? that are, yeah, collaborators, that's good. Collab yeah, you had some it, great great ones on the first record, didn't you? Do do remixes as well. So you you you're saying you, you've stepped it up again. Yeah, it seems like it. I mean, it is just like what the beauty of working with someone like Nat, like he would just go above and beyond to try and make the record as special for you as it would be for him and it would be for everyone else. So like working with people that have been influences and managed to hear that they enjoy it and stuff like that, it's kind of a real like a real boost that I feel like people need, especially after the years we've been through, to kind of keep you going. Yeah, so I'd imagine you've got some some goals in in mind. Then, is there anyone in the world you'd love to play alongside or go on tour with? Um, there's a there's a lot of people. Um, I mean, we've always said that um, Deer Hunter are a, a huge influence, and I think they're one of the people that would just never change. Like from going however far and how different our music changes I just think as a bass influence they've always been there because even it's like the um cuffs the uh, runoffs with like Moon Diagrams who's the, the drummer and I just feel like they're such a where we'd like to see ourselves mm. I guess oh and Sons Sons have been a massive massive influence really so seeing them they're playing we're just going on tour and they're playing that tour at the exact same time which is just sob slow because <laughs> i feel like they're one of our bands that like we're so influenced by but we'll never be able to see that <laughs> unless you you play the similar festivals in the, in the coming year and imagine you've had some good offers but obviously you know we have to go back to that l word lockdown did that uh, knock any plans for you to play any european shows or anything like that and do you have plans to play outside the uk in future um yeah well i mean this tour that we're about to go on i feel like is, is like the the re 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 scheduled tour like we just had to keep pushing it back but yeah i feel we were meant to we went to go a lot of places i feel like america we were set to go and asia um so that's all been pushed back but now working forward i feel like there are plans next year and maybe 2023 it's not been cancelled it's just been postponed so Fingers crossed, we'll be there sooner rather than later. Uh, fingers crossed as well. Just talking more about details of you know another full length. Are you the kind of band who kind of spends a lot of time thinking about how the product, you know, how it looks, and you know how it how it is, and you know the the imagery around it as well? Because I guess with your sound, I've been speaking to a lot of artists recently, and they've even developed a whole kind of visual aspect to, to their music as well. It's something which would lend themselves quite well to your sound, wasn't it? Mm, yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, like we just, we played a show recently at The Social um, and we had a guy called the Strings who did all the visuals like behind us for that. Um, so yeah, I think a lot of the, a lot of artistic degree that just doesn't come with the music is what we think about a lot, especially with Jordan, because Jordan does all the artwork for us. Like he did the, um, and the first album and he's working on 
everything we do and I feel like going forward it's just like it's something that I feel you need to consider just as much as the music you need to consider every part of the aesthetic just because I think you will need to reflect yourself as much as you can um in the whole package rather than just yeah. like this is a song we're putting out because you because we want you to listen to this and, yeah, and live as well I imagine it's very immersive experience you want to try and create as well yeah definitely I mean because I've been really heavily getting into the Velvets and like watching that how they like first started with the whole like like artists on stage and the the visuals on the back and it's just like it kind of just makes it seem louder anyway like just yeah. having the whole experience of you're not just there to listen to music you're to like taking you spend an hour there so you want to give everyone as much as you can sensory overload sensory overload exactly that's the second <laughs> album yeah sorted there you go easy peasy <laughs> uh, right thanks so much for talking to us th this afternoon here on amazing radio it's been a real pleasure to catch up with you uh, we'd love to get another session from you as well maybe even in amazing radio as well now that things are kind of moving back to normal um yeah, but is. yeah thank you so much uh, for the music and we can't wait to hear what you do next thank you very much man nice to speak to you